So today's program will be brought to you by U412. We'll be doing a live edition of our podcast. So right now I'm going to turn on my presenter uh, voice on, and then we'll get the show started. Are you ready? Yes. Uh, come on, guys. I'm not feeling the energy. The adults are gone. You can be free now. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Are you ready? Oh, yes. Are you ready? Definitely. CJ? Definitely. All right. Three, two, one, let's go. Good morning, and how are you today? My name is Doris Lemsan, and I am your host of the Youth for Talk podcast, where we engage in conversations which inspire, empower, and encourage us to be better believers who are an example to other young believers in conversation, in conduct, in spirit, and in love, faith, and purity. My name is Doris Lemsan, as I've said, and I am the host of the Youth for Talk podcast, and I am not alone today. I'm with my co-pilot, my co-host for today, and welcome to our episode podcast. Today we will be doing our most frequently asked questions. Most the Christianity's most frequently asked questions, is it? Yes. And today we are not alone. We've got our special guests, Utalia and CJ. So who do we start with? Let's start with Talia. Talia, how's it today? I'm doing good, sir. How are you? I'm great, thanks. You said you are shy today. Are you feeling better? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Okay. It's fine. You you ease into it. And CJ, you the MVP today. You are hosting. Now you're a guest. Uh, it seems like I like the limelight. Just joking. <laughs> but no, it's very good to be here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, guys, for joining us. You can take your seats before we start with today's conversation of the Christi- of Christianity's most frequently asked questions. So I'm going to ask my co-host to pick two people from that side and I'm going to pick two people from this side I'm just going to do a bit of an exercise just before we start I don't know if you know about us on Instagram we are at youth412 underscore ZA on YouTube youth412 and right now we are at 86 subscribers and I see a lot of people here so I'm going to challenge each and every one of you to go look for youth412 right now on your cell phones Um, During our thing, I'm allowing you to use your phones during this segment and then perhaps by the end of this program We will have a hundred subscribers. Do you think that is possible for you? Very much so. (laughs) So hashtag road to a hundred subscribers. Let's do it. 86 subscribers right now So I'm betting on counting on each and every one of you to subscribe right now. So I'm going to ask for two people Can you please come my good sir? Just yes, yes you and then I'm going to Ask for a lady. Can you please come? Yes. Please. Thank you. Just going to do a short exercise. Your right. side, Prede. Um, can I ask her to stand and... Yes, yes. Okay, so right now we are going to do a segment which we always do on our social media pages. So we're going to be asking them to guess the stranger's favorite Bible character. So right now they are writing their favorite Bible characters on these pieces of paper and then they will guess whose character or which character uh, is each person's favorite. So right now we've got the first character are you sure? Are you guys sure? All right. Okay, put it over to you. Okay. Are they a tag team? I think. Yeah, tag team. You guys can. Give each person a person. Who are we guessing? One on one. Just one on one. One on one? Yeah. All right. So you guess her and who gets him. I think <laughs> Get a clue. No, 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 no. Just guess from the top of your from the top of your of your head. Let the spirit talk to you. <laughs> Any guess? We'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three. Top of your head. Two. Noah. 
Why no? Why Noah? I don't know. You just look like you like the ocean. <laughs> just like he likes the ocean. All right. So let me reveal. This is it, right? Okay. So his favorite Bible character is Matthew. So tell us why Matthew. Uh, it's a book in the Bible. It's a book in the Bible. All right. Okay. So it's not Noah. I'm sorry about that. Better not luck next time. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. I'm gonna say Ruth. Ruth? What? Why Ruth? Because Ruth was a shy person, and I thought they'd have something in common. Oh, that, that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, so her favorite Bible character is Jesus. Right. You want to explain why? Why not Jesus? Oh, why not Jesus? All right, give it up for our guests for today. Thank you very much. Give them a round of applause. All right, so we're about to get into the, to Christianity's most frequently asked questions. Yeah, I, I get the title wrong every time. And we've got our questions audited and verified by um, our auditing company, Deloitte. And so I'm going to ask uh, our auditor to just come and present us our questions before we start. I wish we had some dramatic music right now as the questions are being... Yes, drum roll, please. <laughs> All right, so have these questions been verified? Yeah, they are verified. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. So these questions will be the questions which we'll be going through today. We'll just go maybe, since we don't have time, over two questions or so, and I'll ask our guests to be the ones who will pick them. So who should we start with, Talia or CJ? CJ, okay. Randomly selected. Okay. So the first question is, if God knows everything, like he seems to suggest, and not only that, he seems to have it all worked out, then what's the point in praying or talking to him at all? Sure. That's a tough one. It is, it's a tough question and it's, it's something that I, I feel like I have, uh, I relate to it a lot right now because when, when you read through the Bible and you hear people preach to you, they're always talking about, oh, God knows everything. We already know who's the winning side. God's already won the battle. Why am I going through bad things? Why do I even need to pray to the Lord? But I think sometimes we keep this divine being and human relationship between us and God when that's not really the case, he's called so many personal names in the Bible. He is a brother, he is a father, he is a friend. And when you understand what it means to have a close relationship with someone, you know that communication is very important. There is no way we will be close to God if we do not communicate with God. I mean, he has already communicated with us through the Bible, and we get to read that. But if we don't communicate back, what's the point? And not only that, it's listening to what the Lord has to say. So we need to pray to understand what the Lord is saying to us. Then we need to go back into his word to listen to what he has to say to us. See, prayer, and I was just speaking to Talia about this. Prayer is not there to bring God down to us, but it brings us up to him. It brings us up to God. It brings us into his presence and I don't think we realize or understand just how much we benefit just being in the Lord's presence. I mean, in the Bible itself, a woman didn't even touch the Lord's hand. She didn't look at his face. She just touched the hem of his garment and she was healed. So if just the hem of a garment can do that to someone, what about calling him into your presence? Wow, that's powerful. Does anyone want to add right now? Um, I think I also just wanted to add that communicating with God, as CJ has already said, it brings us closer to God. God doesn't really need to have, you know, communication with us. We need to desperately have communication with Him. And communicating with God reminds us that we're weak, 
that we're fragile, that we're powerless. And that's what God wants from us. He wants us to know that we can only depend on Him because He is the source of life. And I think something else that's important is that communicating with God consistently and harmoniously, like how two people in a relationship should do, it helps us to see God's goodness, God's faithfulness, and God's providence in our lives when He answers our prayers. Wow, that's powerful. Do you have anything to add right now? Um, no, it's just highlighting what they both said, that um, talking to God, it's more of like a conversation, prayer is a conversation with God. So really building that relationship with God is so important in our lives and building that trust between you and God because um, prayer is an act of faith, understanding that you um, are nothing without God and you can do nothing for yourself and relying on God and relying on His will for your life. That is powerful. Thank you very much, guys, for sharing that with us. We're going to move on to the second question. Let me just shake things up here. And uh, all right, you can read the question. Okay, the question says, I've asked God for forgiveness, but I really don't think he has forgiven me. How will I know? Ooh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Who wants to take this one first? Yeah, it's a very really trick question. Um, I think, um, like how, like what most psychologists say, the first step is acceptance. You know, we need to like see that ah, this time I messed up. We need to like be aware of when you do something wrong. Um, second of all, I think you need to like deny yourself, right? Um, just know that you know this one God needs to take over. You know, because really we can't, we can't even forgive ourselves, to be honest. Um, yeah, we desperately need to constantly be speaking to God, constantly be asking God to help us to do better. And when we continue to do that, we find ourselves repenting. And when you look back and see your journey, you know, of how you were and how you are now, I think that also gives you some kind of assurance that God has also forgiven you. God has also sent the Holy Spirit to try and change you as well. That's something that I've tried to. Um, I think just just adding on to what she says, um, the, I don't know where the verse is found specifically, but it says that the Lord is... He is close to the brokenhearted and he saves such as have a contrite spirit. When you recognize your sin and you are willing to repent, you have that guilt in you, you have that remorse. The Lord is there to save us. See, sometimes we have this, this problem of feeling that we can save ourselves or that we can achieve righteousness on our own and we're not willing to think that we are the chief of sinners. You see, if we can just reach that point where you can remind yourself that you were born into sin without even choosing to sin, you're already born into sin, we constantly need to come to God. And we will not be able to save ourselves without the Lord. So constantly going to the Lord, we might not know it personally when the Lord has fully forgiven you, but you can keep on trying. When you're constantly trying, that's 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 the main thing. That's what the Lord wants from from us. He wants us to continue going to Him. And I think it. I, I love that she touched on like psychology. The first step, uh, even with acceptance, just try trying to do better is what we need to be aiming for all the time. And there's a promise, right, that says that if we confess our sins, then He's faithful and just to forgive us. And so if we lean on that promise, then we can have confidence that every time we go to him and confess our sins, that he will forgive us. And it requires us to be vulnerable to God, to come and deny ourselves. So there's a lot of humility that is required from us. But let's do maybe one, one last question. Um, maybe we might involve the audience this time just to get someone else's view. Is it necessary for me to amend broken relationships with people who have hurt me in the past? And is it ungodly to choose not to? Sure. <laughs> Can we skip that one? <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Um, is it necessary to amend broken relationships? Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, it is. It is very. It is very necessary to amend broken relationships. And and why I say that? Maybe maybe I'll speak away from a biblical sense and speak more on a human personal sense. In that, sometimes when people hurt us we are the ones who walk around with that hurt. And say, for example, you, Lindo, you do something that hurts me. Sometimes you don't even know that you've hurt me. I walk away with the hurt. Every time I see you, I feel that hurt. Yet your life is nice. You're, you're, you're not. It's, it's all good in your life. So sometimes, yes, well, not sometimes, all the times, so we need to amend those broken relationships. And sometimes it is for our own good. And not only that, that's where the Lord comes in, that how, how are you going to walk and not be in good standing with someone else, not have love between you and someone else, when that is literally what the law calls us to do. So by deciding to walk around without amended relationships, you're holding on to the hurt, you're holding on to the pain, you're not willing to forgive. We're breaking the law that the Lord has called us to do. How will we see heaven when we hold on to that? Mm. That, that? That is so true. And I mean, the Lord's Prayer says that, um, Lord, forgive us as we forgive others of their debts against us. So if we don't forgive, then how do we expect God to forgive us? But I do want to ask this, and maybe um, if there's anyone from the audience who would like to answer as well, you can just raise your hand. Um, they're talking about mending uh, broken relationships. Uh, there is forgiveness and then there is reconciliation. So that means bringing together if we... Can I forgive someone and not reconcile with them? Is, is that right? To forgive someone and but not want to, to mend the relationship that was there? The broken relationship that was there? Um, I think yes. I think sometimes reconcil reconciliation is not really necessary. Okay, um, I have an analogy. Um, so when we were on our journey to Bloemfontein, um, there was a truck in front of us. Um, and then the car is obviously small. So um, the truck, like, I don't know how to describe this, but the, it threw stones at the car. I don't know how that happened, but yeah, the stones were hitting the window. So um, the truck driver doesn't know that this is happening. So even if you hoot, he doesn't know what's going on, you know, you're just gonna cause a stir. So the best option was to drive to the other side or go to a place where it was safer. So sometimes you don't really need to reconcile. Like if a friend has hurt you, you don't really need to be friends with them again. You can be at a safe distance where you can actually see them, but not really be in a position where they can hurt you again. Wow, wow. That, is, that is very deep. Um, keep it, keeping a safe distance and all that because some people don't change, you know, um, they continue to hurt us. They don't have the capacity to change as well. Yes, and what we can do is just to pray for them that God, you know, continues to work in their hearts so that they can, yeah, yeah not hurt others. Um, is there anyone from the audience who would like to contribute to any one of the questions or this one? There's a hand from the dark right there. Uh, amen. Okay, I like the part that you touched first. So it's two things really, forgiveness and love. I like when, when you quoted the Lord's Prayer that forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we clearly know that one of the requirements to enter heaven is sinlessness. So it doesn't matter what you do. You might keep all other comm commandments, you might, you might do everything right, but as long as there is someone you haven't forgiven, you still have all your sins with you. God cannot forgive you because you haven't uh, forgiven someone. So I, I remember the story when Jesus Christ uh, makes a parable about a man and, and says that there was a man or who owed a master, okay, I'll just say billions of friends. And then the master, because he saw, he saw that he couldn't pay them, he just forgave him. And then later, the same uh, servant went on and saw uh, a man maybe who was owing, owing him 1,000 one, one rand. 
And then he asked for the money, he couldn't get it. And then he asked for that man to be put to jail and all those things. So now another servant saw it and said, couldn't you forgive this man? Sorry, he, he saw this thing and then went and, and called the master. The master came and said, couldn't you forgive this man for this little thing? If you have been forgiven this much. So Christ is doing the same thing uh, with us. If we have been forgiven much, we deserve that and everything like that. But still we are here, we are standing and we have been promised heaven. So can't we forgive the little that someone like this, there's literally nothing on earth someone can do for you. Sorry, can do to you that can make you not be able to forgive that person. Christ actually died for us. That's how expensive his forgiveness is. So, if we want to heaven, we should walk as Christ uh, did. If you read uh, Steps to Christ, uh, chapter 1, I think it's paragraph, yeah, it's, it, it's 12. It says that Christ saw in everyone that, that it was his mission to save them. In everyone. So what does that mean? It means that there is no stranger to him. Everyone in the streets, everywhere. He doesn't have a person that I like. I don't care how I treat this one as as long as I am right with the people I know. No, he treated everyone equally because everyone deserved to enter heaven. So how do you plan to enter heaven if there's someone out there who is angry at you? You can't you can't enter heaven. So in closing, just one verse. It says that First uh, John four verse twenty. If someone says, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Amen. Wow. Wow. Powerful, powerful stuff, dog. Um, okay, so I see some other hands. We're just going to take one more hand. Uh, I'm going to close my eyes uh, so that it does not seem like I'm discriminating. It's, it's from this side. And I know what it, okay. The hand is down here, so okay, I'll just <laughs> go with that one. Um, just quickly. Uh, yeah, I think. Matthew 18, verse 15 says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. I think this uh, simply says, if someone offends you, you have uh, an obligation on your side to go to him, tell him. Uh, so it is important to consider reconciliation very important because God takes it it's very serious. And also the Bible says, follow peace with all men. Uh, holiness with which none of you or us will see God without so it's important forgiveness because it also adds by saying if you do not forgive you will not be forgiven so it's very important thank you well powerful thank you very much uh for those contributions guys and yeah we've run out of time unfortunately speaking However, if you are looking for more of this, you can catch it on our YouTube channel. We had a series uh, by some siblings uh, from the church, so you guys can go check it out. Answering Christianity's most frequently asked questions. I don't know if you guys have one last contribution before I give an update on how many subscribers we have before we say goodbye. Any last words from our guests uh, today? Tadia. I just wanted to touch up on the last question that we just did. The Bible does encourage us to forgive, it encourages us to confess our sins to each other and to God himself. Um, and all of that is for our own good because there's some kind of peace that you obtain when you forgive someone. There's some kind of peace that you obtain when you leave your problems you know, behind you. And that's very important. But something else that's important is that the Bible does not promote staying in a toxic relationship or in a toxic friendship. You need to have the courage to know where you can stay, 
when you can continue tolerating something or when you can walk out because Christ does not say no just just keep dealing you know with all this these toxicated emotions um, yeah that's very important last words last words from your side all right, thank you very much, Talia, CJ, Pele, and thank you very much to you guys, the English Youth Federation, for giving us your time. Our subscribers at this point. <laughs> 104. Who wants to read? Talia, can you please give us? 104. From 86. We had, yeah, 86, I think. 86 subscribers. From 86 subscribers. From 86 subscribers, we're sitting at 105. Oh! subscribers give yourselves a round of applause guys thank you very much for subscribing if you haven't subscribed i'll give you till the end of the day i'll check your phones before you leave here anyway thank you very much guys catch you next time same time on the youth for talk podcast and remember young people to never let anyone look down on you because you are young but keep setting an example for other young believers in conversation conduct and spirit and then love faith and purity good night and god bless Amen.